Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can build a chat UI for Llama V2 chat. Today, I'm going to be using the 7TB model and it's already deployed. In, in my previous videos, I've shown you how to deploy the models yourself so you can, you can do that part your, uh, on your own. Uh, today, I'm just going to build the chat UI and consume that API. You can use this technique to build a chat UI for any kind of LLM. So we are going to start with importing a few things. Let's import OS. Let's import Gradio as GR. That's what we are using today. And make sure that you updated your Gradio to the latest version. And from text generation, we import client. Uh, text generation part has also been explained before, so I'm not going to explain it again. Llama 7TB. I will add link to the videos in the description so you can take, take a look or you can just go back and uh, see other videos. So os.environment.get. So I get the link to the Llama model from an environment variable called Llama 7TB. Otherwise you can, so it's going to look some, something like this, HTTP slash slash localhost 3000. So you can deploy it pretty easily using text generation inference. And our client will be client. And inside this, we have the base URL, which is llama 7 tb So this is what we got. And now we have some parameters for obviously for the LLM. So let's create a dictionary parameters. And my parameters are temperature. Let's set it to 0 0.1 top B 0.95. Repetition penalty 1.2. So feel free to change the parameters and play around with the parameters and see how it affects the generation. Top K 50 max new tokens 1024. Truncate after 1000 tokens. Um, and then I usually like to put seed. So generations are same. Stop sequences. So here you need to provide the end token end of sentence token so slash s that's the that's for llama so if you if you're using a different model it might change so take a look at that and now we have the prompt so this is a very interesting part a lot of people are confused with how to format the prompt for llama chat so you're going to see now so it always starts with us S, which is the beginning of the sentence token, and then inst, which is instruction. And then you have this token. It says the system command begins here. And then you write, you are a helpful bot. Answer user questions. Respect the user. Okay. Don't provide false answers. If you don't know, just say that you don't know anything, anything you want, anything that makes sense. So then you have again slash s sys okay so this becomes your 
the beginning of the prompt i'm just going to add a new line here so that i don't have to add it again uh, add it later and uh, now we now we create the chatbot so i will define a function predict which takes message and history so so message is a current user message and history is a list of tuples so history looks something like this uh, user message one bot message one then user message two bot message two and so on and if it's the first message the history is empty okay so now uh, we have to format the messages for uh, the bot so if, if you're not using not planning to use context or anything then it's very simple just add the user message to the prompt and you're done but we, we will add, use the context so if length of history is zero if there is nothing in the history it's the first message so i can say query is a prompt we should probably call that pre-prompt and call this prompt but anyways message okay and then after the first message you have to add slash inst so we begin the instruction token here and it ends after the first message from the user when there's no messages else let's say lf history is one length of history is one okay now one is also a special case at least for the llama chatbot so my query will become prompt so now here what's happening the user has already sent a message for example hi and then got a response hi how are you doing uh, you can ask me anything and then uh, i have length of history is one i have one message from the bot and there is a second message from the user so now we what we have to do is we say okay take the first user message and add it to prompt like we did before history zero zero and then add the end token for instruction after this immediately add the second uh, sorry uh, the user's response sorry the bot's response and after this um end token the real end token slash s else now the else part is much easier <laughs> okay um so so far we have added like this query i think it's it's just better to uh okay let's call this function format message and here we can just return this after the first message and if it's not the first message then we are going to format the query and now i will say for user message comma model answer in history but here we have already taken care of the first and the second message so when th when the list uh, sorry we have already taken care of the first message and the first response so when length of history is zero and when length of history is one so now we do this so like we don't need to look at the first item in history 
in my formatted message or let's say the query will become query plus equals f and then there is a beginning of sentence token and after that you have the inst token there should not be any space here and after that you have the user message then again an inst token so like this one just to finish the instruction and then you have the model launcher and then you end this with the end of sentence token okay so now you have taken care of the history in this case you have taken care of the message also but you still haven't taken care of the current user message so query will also add to itself with f again a s inst message and end of send end of instruction so this is this is the problem here in the first one you don't have this this token the beginning of sentence token because the beginning of sentence token is already here but when the next message comes the second message onwards you have this beginning of sentence token beginning of instruction token and then the message then end the instruction and for subsequent answers you add the model answer and this end of sentence token so this is what this whole thing is doing and once you have all this you can just return the query okay so now let's define a predict function which takes the same thing message history okay uh, so my query is format message message comma history and now I will create the text which is the response text and I will say for response in client dot generate stream so this is a text generation client I have the query and the parameters if not response dot token dot special if it's not a special token text plus equals response dot token dot text and here instead of adding uh, instead of returning anything I just yield yield text okay uh, before I move on to creating the UI I would like to mention that um, here uh, one more thing that you can do is take care of the context because this this is going to the length is going to become huge so I can say if length of history is greater than five so I will keep only the last five messages in history so my history will become history minus five to end so I'm always keeping only the last five messages in history so you can also uh, keep this as a parameter if you want and now Gradio has uh, done something amazing and it's super easy so once you have this you just call gr dot chat interface predict dot q dot launch and we are done with our app so yeah in almost 50 lines of code we are done could have been smaller um uh, so that's it. 
and now let's run it so let me forward the port 7860 and we go to terminal here I will run python app.py okay um, let's open the browser now and see if it works okay we are in the browser and this is how it looks like so you see we also have the retry functionality undo clear we have all these functionalities so you don't need to worry about anything let's see i will say hi and it gives me an error awesome okay it's because i forgot to export the environment variable so okay i have done that now and let me start the app again so i'm just writing python app.py Got nothing to see there let's refresh this page and try again hey it works right um, my name is Abhishek okay uh, can you write code to read a CSV in Python without pandas okay so yeah it's it's working it's importing the csv module and yeah it's it's look it's super fast and you can also deploy the 7b model on your local machine with a single gpu so take a look at my previous tutorial um, if you want to know how to do that uh, okay it has it has written quite a lot of stuff so now let's see what is my name okay so it doesn't remember my name anymore so my name what is my name let's try Meh. so yeah context works and that's what i wanted to show you <laughs> like the context works um let's clear everything how to uh, tie a tie great so i think that's all for today's video don't forget to like the video and do subscribe to the channel and uh, share the video with your friends and i'll see you in the next one thank you bye bye